So I'd like to move on to kind of timing and recovery. Now, the thing is, we, we have talked about some of these some of these things as we've gone through, that, that's fine. Um, so if we're talking about uh, the, the, the strength training, so how many times, what would be, what's kind of the minimal effective dose and how many times would you do that during a week? So the, the amount of times you do any type of exercise is, is really independent, uh, sorry, it's individualized. Hmm. So everybody is gonna recover at different rates. And the, re the real way to look at this is we talk about it as how many times do you go, how hard do you exercise when you do it, and how long do you exercise for? If you exercise really long, you're not going to be able to go as, as many times to the gym as it were. It, so, so all of these three things, the frequency, the intensity, and the duration, these are all the things that we're controlling. And so if I go... And if I know that I love to be, I have to exercise every day for my mental health, then what I'm going to do is I, I can't exercise at a super high intensity every day. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have to make sure that I allow myself the chance to recover. And really, um, a lot of people really look to, to science for ways to recover. And that's really one of these kind of niche areas where there's all kinds of things. If you go onto Amazon or you go into any kind of um, any kind of store online uh, search engine and you put in muscle recovery, there's going to come up all kinds of stuff. And 90 percent of it, 98 percent of it has no beneficial effects. All right. The, there's two things that do idealized recovery. So idealized recovery is two things. One is that it gets you back to the point where you recover faster so that you can do your next bout of exercise sooner. The second thing is that it'll, it doesn't block the adaptation. So a lot of the things that we do to get us back to exercise again, such as ice baths or taking non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, they actually decrease the adaptation from each bout of exercise. So it's really, really interesting because if I go in and I do the same exercises, but every day I take non steroidal anti-inflammatories after my exercise, I'm gonna decrease my strength gains. I'm gonna decrease my endurance adaptation if I'm doing endurance exercise. Because some of the, the stress there and of the exercise is what our body's adapting to. And so when we're looking to increase adaptation, what we want to do is we want to have as much metabolic stress, all of the things that mm. our body is trying to overcome with a, as little mechanical stress as we can. So if I want to, if I'm going to do, if I want to exercise every day, instead of running where there's a, a really hard impact force, I'm going to add bike cycling in there because there's a, I can really get, as my daughter used to say, she can get really puffed out. So I can work my heart and I can work my muscles without having that impact force. It's a body weight supported exercise. So now I can exercise more frequently because I don't have that mechanical load. So when I'm looking at how many times a week I can go, I'm trying to balance those two things, the mechanical stress and the, the metabolic stress. If it's just metabolic stress because I swim or I run, sorry, or I bicycle or I row, I can regenerate my, my metabolic systems really, really quickly. I'll have a snack, I'll eat some food, I can regenerate really quickly, and I can go again really soon. If I'm playing soccer, or I'm and changing directions a lot, or I'm running, or I'm doing you know basketball, and there's a lot of jumping, a lot of really high impact, now I can't necessarily go as frequently because there's more me me mechanical, um, stress and that mechanical stress is what if i don't measure it right i'm going to break down over time so as i was saying most of the things that we do to accelerate recovery stop us from getting better there's only two things that we know about that um, increase the rate at which we recover and improve our adaptation and the first of those two things is sleep mm -hmm. and the second of them is eating a, a decent amount of protein in the diet so leucine rich protein because the leucine rich protein, if I did damage my muscle for that muscle to regenerate, it needs the building blocks and it needs the stimulus to incorporate the new amino acids into it and build that muscle and regenerate it. 
So, and a lot of that happens when I'm sleeping. So if I want to maximize my recovery, I really want to focus on my sleep and getting good leucine rich protein. And, and so those are the two things that I'll do. And then what I'll do is I'll look at my exercise and I'll say, okay, I, I like to run. So I'll, I run about, uh, but I'm, I'm 200 pounds. So, you know, I'm 90 ish kilos. So I'm not, there's a lot, 95 kilos. So there's a lot of impact force there. So I'm not going to run every day because that's going to be too much of the mechanical stress. So I'm only going to run every other day at most. And then if I want to do endurance exercise, the other days I'll cycle. And then what I'll do is I'll lift weights. So what I tend to do is I, I'll run three days a week and I'll lift on opposing days. And then that gives me six days a week where I'm doing, you know, organized exercise. And then I try and play on the other day because we, always forget that one of the joys of exercise is play. And so that could be that I'll dance or that I'll play with my daughter, or I'll do other things, but it's an activity. It's a physically stressful thing, mm -hmm. like wrestling with my daughter, pillow fighting with her. That really gets, it's a high intensity exercise, but mm -hmm. it's not nearly as much of the kind of mon the monotonous, um, more, you know, mundane exercise that, that we feel like we right. have to do right so you were talking about protein in that so that that's great that I, so i wanted to talk about that. so um what is what are the rules for like taking protein after exercise to get the best benefit um yeah. is this particular time window or, and what kind of protein would you you say leucine rich but is yeah. there any particular type Okay, so again, great questions. And this, again, we think is more important as you get older. Mm. So the initial studies that showed that there was a window, what they called this window of opportunity for protein, were done in, in an older population. And what they found is that when they fed the older population within the first two hours after their exercise bout, then, or 30 minutes after the exercise bout, they saw an increase, a greater increase in muscle mass and strength in the older individuals. And we've done a few studies looking at this and, and we see the same thing in older rats. And one of the things that we find is that as we get older, we lose insulin sensitivity, okay? And that's really important, not because of any fancy, fancy things that are happening necessarily inside the muscle fiber, but what insulin, one of the things that insulin does is it causes blood vessels to open so that we get muscle, the muscle gets more blood flow so that those amino acids that you ate will go into the muscle. And so what we find is that as we get older, so in our, in our study, what we did is we, we exercised young animals and we looked at protein synthesis over time. And then we exercised old animals and did the same thing. And what we found is that the initial response was almost identical. But then what we noticed was that in the old animals, their protein synthesis rate came back down to, to normal by 48 hours, whereas in the young, it stayed elevated. And there's this prolonged ability for young people when they eat protein 24 hours after they've done exercise, they're still gonna get more protein synthesis in the muscles they've exercised than if they didn't exercise the day before. We don't see the same thing in older individuals. And one of the things, one of the reasons we think is because of this insulin resistance. When you exercise, what it does is it causes blood vessels to open so that you can get rid of the waste products because you're, you're using energy. So you're producing carbon dioxide. You're producing all of these metabolic waste products that cause vasodilation in the muscles that you've exercised. And so that's why all the guys go to the gym on Friday afternoon so they can lift weights so that when they put on their t-shirt Friday night and they go out to the bar, their, their muscles look bigger because that increase in blood flow is going to last for at least two plus hours. And because of their increase of blood flow, you're going to get this um, extra fluid that comes into your muscle and makes it look big. For us, the important part is that if I'm older, that extra blood flow for those first couple of hours will help me target the nutrition that I've eaten to the muscles. If I'm insulin resistant, it's much more important for me to, to do exercise, even small amounts of exercise, so that, the, so that the blood vessels to that muscle are going to open up and I'll get more of the amino acids to the muscles that I want to see those amino acids. 
Okay, so, so that's why um, in older people, we look to either increase the amount of protein. So there's beautiful work from Dan Moore that shows that any young person, you need 0.25 grams per kilogram body weight in order to maximize your muscle protein synthesis. In an old person is closer to 0 0.4, 0 0.45 grams per kilogram body weight. So you need significantly more protein to see the same effect. And this anabolic window of how soon after exercise you take it is a little bit more important if you're older. So if you're, if you're older, and that includes me now, so, so what I'm looking to do is within the first hour, I'm looking to have some source of protein. Um, and it doesn't have to be anything specific. It doesn't have to be a, a, a protein supplement. It doesn't, it doesn't have, if you enjoy drinking milk, drink milk. If you like eggs, you can have eggs. Eggs are a very leucine rich food. And the reason that leucine is important is because it's a, it's a, it's a targeted amino acid because it seems like that's a rare amino acid. Our cells developed a mechanism where they can sense how much leucine is there. And as leucine goes up, we increase protein synthesis. And so that's why it's good to build our muscles. Okay, so, so leucine rich protein or any, any meat, any, mm -hmm. any animal meats are gonna be good. And then the one thing that we see is some of the plant-based uh, proteins have lower leucine content in them. So what that means is if you're gonna take say a pea or a soy protein, what you would do is instead of going at that 0.4 grams per kilogram body weight, now I go up to maybe about a 0.6 or a little bit higher because the amount of leucine is lower, I'm gonna add a little bit higher amount of protein, okay? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be, a, you don't have to become a carnivore, you don't have to become anything, you can use your, your, your plant-based protein, you just might have to eat a little bit more because plants tend to be lower in leucine and the availability of the leucine is lower as well. Thank you all for watching. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button for new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.